Hello and welcome to SL Techie Guy. You are watching a lesson on IP addressing. In this lesson, I will give you a basic knowledge about IP version 4 and IP version 6 addressing structure and different class types. So let's go ahead and get started. Before starting this lesson, I highly recommend you to watch my previous two video lessons on this series, Introduction to Networking Basics and TCP IP Overview Lessons. I will leave links for those videos in the description of this video lesson. Now, when it comes to IP version 4, there is actually different classes and each class represents a size. The first one that we have is a class A address. A class A address is designed for large enterprise addresses. And that very first number, remember, mine was 192. That very first number can be from 0 to 127. Now, by doing so, that means I support 127 networks. That means I have 127 different companies or campuses throughout the different universities that we have that can have a class A address. But each one of those networks each one of those companies or each one of those campuses can have up to 16,777,216 hosts in their network, meaning computers and printers and routers and such. Now, a default submit mask is going to be 255.0.0.0. So, that means only the very first number 127 or 2 or 10 or whatever it happens to be once again between 0 and 127 only that very first number is going to be the network address and the remaining three numbers are going to be part of the host address well it makes sense that if we have a class a we are going to have a class b and if a class a was designed for large networks well Class B is going to be for our mid-sized networks. Now, once again, think about that very first number. Mine was 192, right? So, if my number happens to be between 128 and 191, that makes me a class B network. Now, class B network means that we can have up to 16,384 networks. So, once again, 16,000 companies or campuses or etc. could be assigned a class B address. And each one of those different environments can have up to 65,534 different hosts. Once again, computers, printers, routers and etc. that are part of their network. Now, the default subnet mask you will notice is 255.255.0.0. .255 zero so that means the very first two numbers are going to be part of our network address and the last two numbers are going to be part of our host address so if i was 172.10 that would be my network address and then the next part 20.40 as an example would be my host address so we have class a which is large class b which is medium that means class C is going to be small networks. This is going to be the most common VC, especially in a home environment or a small office environment. You will notice it starts at 192 and goes up to 223. Now, think about the address that I had in my previous video lesson. It is 192.168.8, right? So, that means Mine was a class C address. Now, class C addresses, notice we support up to 2,097,152 networks. That means 2 million companies or campuses could be assigned a class C address. But notice that as we go down in size, remember large enterprises 16 million hosts, class B mid size 65,000 hosts, small. 254 hosts but 
think about it more specially home officers networks for small businesses mid sized businesses even some of our large businesses that may have different offices spread out chances are they are not going to have more than 200 computers inside their network now the default submit pass for a class c is going to be 255.255.255.0 so what does that tell us it means the first three numbers are going to be part of our network address and the very last number is going to be our host address now remember we talked about a multicast packet in our first video lesson introduction to networking basics lesson well there is a special class d network range 224 up to 239 this is designed for multicast traffic only we cannot assign a class d to an actual host a b and c we can actually give to different hosts to different devices but a class d we can't once again it is going to be part of our actual application and devices that we are using now there are considered some special addresses that exist out in the tcp ip environment especially with ip version 4 with ip version 4 we do have what are called private addresses now private addresses mean you can use them internally within your organization but they are not allowed out across the internet if they go out across the internet well pretty much they get killed because they are not allowed out there that's why they are called private anything out on the internet is considered public and if you think about it like the cable modem that you might have at your home or through your office environment that's actually going to have a public address that exist on the network side or the internet side and on the internal side that's where the private ip addresses come in now we actually have one for each class now at the class a level we have the 10 address so 10.0.0.0 through 10.255.255.255 so we could actually use the 10 range internally within our network it just once again cannot go out across the internet in the class b we have 172.16 through 172.32. 255.255 once again allowed internally within our network just not allowed outside into the internet now this should look a little bit familiar to you because this is what i am using 192.168.0.0 through 192.168.255.255 this is the most common that you are going to see right and if you go to the whatever your local retail outlet is and you buy a wireless router or a home router or maybe you get one from your internet service provider that is the address you are going to typically see by default in this class c range now there is what is called net network address translation what this does is it helps us be able to translate the private and public ip addresses and keeps track of the traffic that is going to be going through to the internet that way we only have to assign one ip address to that actual like cable modem or internet router but we don't have to have that on the internal side i mean ip version 4 addresses they are basically gone so this is our way of being able to use a device called net or network address translation we also have what is called an api pa address automatic private ip addressing now an api pa address happens when we do not have a dhcp server or a service that is going to provide us with an address automatically now cable companies they are going to provide that cable modem with an ip address automatically or dhcp enabled if i went down to my favorite retail store and i bought a wireless router it's going to have dhcp built into it but what happens if that service isn't available well that's where this range comes in 169.254.0.0 to 169.254.255.255 
254. Now with Apipa, if you see a 169 address, you are going to know right away that that means DHCP was not available to you. All you have to do is figure out why, go fix your service, whatever it happens to be. Maybe your cable modem became unplugged or your wireless router got unplugged or something like that. Typically what you do is unplug it and plug it back in. That usually helps to resolve some of that. We also have what is called a loopback or diagnostic address. This loopback or diagnostic address is just designed to see is TCP IP working. And this address is 127.0.0.1 and we typically use this with what is called a ping packet. So what is the future of IP addresses? Well, remember we said that IP version 4 addresses are basically gone. I mean, if it wasn't for something like NET or network address translation, we would be out and nobody knew would be able to connect to the internet. So that's where IP version 6 comes in. Now, here is a typical IP version 4 address. Once again, 4 numbers, dotted decimal, right? IP version 6 can be up to 128 hexadecimal bits. Imagine 128 bits that's going to make up our actual IP address. Imagine trying to figure out how we connect and communicate to everybody using all of those different bits, right? We also do something a little different. We are not using a dotted decimal notation anymore here. We are going to use a colon to separate our groups out. Now, what does this truly means to us? Well, with IP version 4, we had a total of 4 billion addresses available. Well, that is if we used every possible number, right? Luckily, with once again, things like network address translation, we are able to expand that a little bit. In IP version 6 addressing, we can have up to 340 undecillion IP addresses. It is more than enough for the near future. Now, IP version 6 is rolling out slowly. I mean, there is no way for us to just all of a sudden one day say, all right, we are going to turn off IP version 4. Everybody switch. We can't do that. So IP version 6 is slowly rolling out. There are devices out there today that do support IP version and Windows 10 actually support both IP version 4 and IP version 6 addressing.